Well, remember, remember what I told you yesterday. Your body continues consuming small amounts of muscle through the process. And it makes sugar from the muscle. That's what it's doing with it. Okay. The point of using muscle is because the body, there's, there's no real sugar available from fat metabolism, but the body can convert muscle into sugar. The reason you, so at the beginning of the process, okay, you had your last meal, let's say on Saturday morning, <coughs> okay, let's say at nine o'clock Saturday morning. By nine o'clock Saturday night, your body had ceased to have anything useful in your digestive tract. So there's still stuff in there. Most of you still are going to have stuff in there the entire time. But nothing really very useful to the body at that point. So it's, not, it's no longer going to be getting glucose from your digestive tract. Okay? At that point, 8 to 12 hours after your last meal, your body is going to go to your liver because we store glycogen in the liver. And glycogen is a glucose precursor. So your body converts glycogen into glucose. That's why we store it. That's how we store it. Glucose is glycogen. Okay? Where else do we store glycogen? In the muscles. In the muscles. Yeah. We don't use muscle glycogen while fasting. We don't use it. Very little sugar available from fat metabolism. It does. The body begins running on ketones from fat metabolism, but it still needs sugar for your brain and for other organs. So it continues to consume muscle. But let's go back to what's happening. So muscle, do the body doesn't use muscle glycogen. Why not? You might need muscles to move. What if you've injured yourself? You're lying on the, on the forest floor for a week because you, you broke your leg and you can't move or whatever it is. Now you feel okay and you're ready to go find food. But you have no muscle glycogen. You've got nothing to feed your muscles because you used it all up the first day. How are you going to go find food? How are you going to climb a tree? How are you going to pull yourself up into a tree? Okay? Your body reserves muscle glycogen when fasting so that you can use your muscles when you need to. All right? And let me give you a really powerful example of this. Polar bears don't hibernate like some other bears do, but female polar bears do something akin to hibernation. They create a, a den underground. They go in there. They give birth to their two, they have two cubs at a time. They give birth to their two cubs and they breastfeed them and they stay there five months underground with nothing to eat and nothing to drink five months. They come out half the size they went in. Okay. Now here's the, here's the important piece here. Where they make their winter home, their shelter for various reasons is about 75 miles, 110 kilometers or so from their feeding ground which means they emerge from their den five months later and they've got to walk 75 miles before they get their first meal. You think it might be useful to have some muscle glycogen? I mean, their babies have been feeding. The two cubs have been getting breast milk. But Mama Bear's got to walk 75 miles and she's had nothing to eat for, si for five months. She'd better have some fuel to fuel those muscles. Okay? So what the body does is it goes to liver glycogen there's 8 to 12 hours worth average, on average, which means by the time you're 24 hours into the process, roughly, we don't have any more muscle glycogen. So what does the body do then? Well, what you'd like it to do would be to start using fat. But that's not what happens. Okay? Why doesn't it happen? People, you know, I, people tell me all the time on YouTube what an idiot I am. Why would the body conserve, consume muscle when it's got fat? Don't know, but it does. We measure it. It's what happens every single time. You're going to see for yourself. But there is a reason why. Okay? Why do you think it might happen that way? Is it easier to get? It's easier to get energy from fat, uh, well, muscle than the fat. It's. I don't know that it's actually easier, but it's. E Listen, your body doesn't know. Your body doesn't know that you've decided you're not eating for the next 21 days. 
or 26 days or 30 days or 35 days or 42 days or whatever the hell it is. Your body doesn't know that. Here's what your body knows. It's Tuesday morning. I haven't had anything to eat since Saturday morning. Where's the food? We, I need a short-term source of fuel until I find some food. Your body's thinking, you know, if I encounter food in an hour, do I really want to change fuel systems to go from running on sugar to running on fat? It's a change. What's the point of changing over if I just need a little bit of fuel right now to make it through the next hour or two until I find some food? But what, what's going to happen is by the time you're three to three and a half days into the process, and this is going to vary depending on your body composition. So let's say we've got a bodybuilder and he's, he's 250 pounds, solid muscle, okay? His body is going to say, you can have muscle for the next three weeks. It's not, not really, but it's not too concerned about losing muscle because he's got way more muscle than any human being ever needs to have. When's the last time you needed to pick your car up and lift it over your head? Okay, no one needs to, you know, to have that. So that body is not concerned about consuming more muscle mass. Let's say we have somebody, have you heard the term skinny fat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is where someone has more body fat than is healthy, but it doesn't look like it. I first encountered this, we had a mother and daughter here together several years ago. Uh, the daughter was around 19 or 20. Mother was, was uh, 45, she played tennis, she ran, she lifted weights, she was fit. Her daughter was an artist, and the most uh, exercise she did was moving her pencil, okay? That's all she did. She didn't do any physical activity at all. I mean, walking to the toilet, to the refrigerator. That was it, you know, to the car. She didn't do anything. She didn't look like she was overweight. I mean, she looked like an average person, not really fit, but not, not obese, just sort of normal. But she didn't have any muscle. I mean, her muscle mass was like super, super low, and her body fat was much higher than you would have guessed from looking at her. Because in the absence of muscle, what, what is there is except fat. We have, we, we, these are 16 ounce glasses. We've always used roughly 16 ounce glasses. That was the first time I went and bought eight ounce glasses, half size glasses. Why? Because this girl, 10 days or so into her fast, couldn't lift a 16 ounce glass full of water. It was too heavy for her to pick it up and bring it to her mouth. So I bought smaller glasses, okay? That's pretty weak, okay? So someone with very low muscle mass, their body's gonna say, I, you can't keep consuming, they're not gonna make it three days. After a day and a half, their body might say, look, I don't wanna lose any more muscle. Let's go ahead and switch over to fat now. Does that make sense? Your body is intelligent, okay? The average person is gonna be three, three and a half days before the body gets concerned about losing muscle because it's a tiny amount of muscle. And finally, it's gonna say, eventually get to the point where it says, let's not lose any more muscle, let's go ahead and make that switch, right, we'll change fuels over to running on fat. That happens three, three and a half days in for most people. But we continue to consume small amounts of muscle throughout the process. How much? Well, the first week, remember, these first few days, three, three and a half days, there's a fair amount of muscle being consumed, very little fat. And then what happens is your body begins to ramp up fat consumption and ramp down muscle consumption. So by the end of the first week, your body's still been consuming a fair amount of muscle. The second week, by around day 10 or so, day 10 or 11, it's almost entirely fat and, and a tiny amount of muscle. So it's ramping down the first three or four days of the second week and then it reaches this low point. So what, what we tend to see is that the first week, uh, a big, you know, average guy might lose seven or eight pounds of muscle, maybe, maybe six, women a little less because they have less. But the second week is half as much as the first week. And the third week is half as much as the second week. Sorry, how much in kilos? Um, three to, uh, let's see. Yeah, two, two and a half to three and a half kilos, roughly, somewhere in there, okay? But it's gonna be half as much the second week and half as much again the third week, all right? And then if you continue going beyond three weeks, it'll stay level because now it's almost entirely fat 
and that's not changing, and with a little bit of muscle. So it's not really going to change after that. Now, you can change how that is. You can change how much muscle is being consumed. Anybody want to guess how you do that? Exercise. Exercise. Be more active. And it's ironic because people think, I want to exercise so I don't lose so much muscle. But when you exercise, you're increasing your body's caloric needs. And your body's going to consume more muscle. Don't do it. Remember, cats and dogs are doing what when they're fasting? Nothing. Nothing. So right? you're saying there's no point really to, if you die for three or four days, you're not going to lose any fat at all. It's useless. No, um, that's not true. I mean, first of all, dieting for three or four days is different than fasting, considerably different. And there will be some fat loss. You're also, most people are going to lose excess water. They're going to, they're going to eliminate some edema, that they're, you know, excess water, they're holding extracellular water. Um, and they're, they're changing, yeah, I mean, there, there are various things happening. I mean, generally speaking, dieting is useless. And it's worse than useless, right? Yeah, I mean, first of all, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not that you damage your metabolism, which is what people say. That's, that's a whole, people don't really understand this. And I'm not sure if we want to get into this yet. I don't think we do. I think we're going to come back to that another time. It's too early for that.